Hello everyone and thanks for watching Edupedia World Videos. In this video we will study two devices that are used to create alternating currents and alternating voltages. They are the AC generator and the transformer. Let's look at the working of the AC generator first. So this is the north and south pole of the same bar magnet and we've studied magnets before. We know that what this will end up doing is producing a magnetic field, let's say of magnitude B, from the north pole to the south pole. Right. These two can be parts of a different magnet or they can actually be parts of the same magnet which can go around a long loop. Between the poles of this magnet, we attach a coil and we wrap wire around the coil several times. So this will be the coil and the wire will be wrapped like this around the coil several times. Let's say a total of n times. Then we'll rotate this coil at an angular velocity omega about the axis pointing away from the viewer. Right. And what does that end up doing? Because this is a current carrying loop, potentially current carrying loop, the, and it is rotating the flux of the magnetic field through this loop will keep on changing. Though the magnetic field is the same and the area of the loop is the same, the angle between them will keep changing because we are rotating this loop at an angular speed omega. Now if the flux keeps on changing, we know that that is going to create an EMF and a net current inside this loop. So let's look at the mathematics of it. Initially let's say the area vector is pointing perpendicular to the magnetic field. After it, area vector moves a little bit, the angle between them will be omega t. Because initially it was zero, to time t, the coil will be rotated by an angle omega, and initially if the angle was zero, now it will be omega t. So what will be the flux of the magnetic field through this loop? It will be small n, because that is the number of loops, times a times b, times cos of omega t. Right. The magnetic field multiplied by the area multiplied by cos of the angle between them. Right. That is the definition of flux. We will multiply it by n because there are n loops. So each loop will have a flux of a b cos omega t. The total flux through the loop and hence the total emf will be n a b cos omega t. The emf will be the derivative of this. Right. So this is the magnetic flux through this loop at any time t. We just differentiate it with respect to time and we get the EMF is equal to minus d phi b by dt which is equal to n a b omega sine omega t which can be written as E naught the magnitude sine omega t. So this is the AC generator and this is generally used to create alternating currents. We have two poles of a magnet end up creating a constant magnetic field in a particular direction. Then we'll have a loop of a wire wrapped around a loop many times. It's only done many times so that E0 can be increased. We can get a greater value. The coil will be rotated about a horizontal axis at an angular speed omega. So the angle between the area vector of this coil, wherever it's facing and the magnetic, excuse me, and the magnetic field will continuously keep changing. That will result in the flux constantly changing, which will result in an EMF in the loop. Then obviously, we can take two ends of the wire, let's say the wire entered like this, was wrapped n times and came out like this, then this can be one end of the terminal of the battery, this can be the other end of the terminal of the battery, and we have created an alternating current source, alternate voltage generating source, in which E is equal to E0 sine omega t, which is what we were looking for. Uh, e naught here is the maximum value of the EMF and is generally called the peak EMF. And obviously there are other quantities for every AC generator like the time period which is 2 pi by omega and so on. Another important thing, to increase this value of E naught even further, a lot of times what we do is between these two poles, north and south, we add a piece of soft iron core. We've studied magnets and we know that if we add a piece of soft iron core which is a ferromagnetic material, it will increase the magnetic field by a huge amount. Not by a small amount but by a factor of a thousand or so. 
So to increase the value of E0, we can put some ferromagnetic material, mostly a soft iron core because it has a low, excuse me, which has a low retentivity and low coercivity. We can use that and that will increase the value of E0. Let's look at transformers now. Transformers are not used to create an alternating current. They can be used to increase or decrease the magnitude and phase of alternating current. So if, if you have one alternating current source, you can use a transformer to create a second alternating current source which would have a different peak EMF. This is the construction of a transformer. This material, which this is all the material inside its hollow, is made up of a ferromagnetic material, generally again a soft iron core. There will be a wire wrapped a certain number of times around one side, and that will be connected to an AC source. And there will be wires wrapped around here many times and they might be connected to some resistance and we want an AC source across this resistance. Generally transformers are used to get a low voltage source from a high voltage source or vice versa. So we have one alternating current source here, from that we would like to create another alternating current here which would have a different value of the peak EMF. Let's say there are N1 turns here and there are N2 turns here and the EMF supplied is E1. We would like an EMF E2 created here which would have a different peak EMF value. So for this circuit, the equation will be E1 minus, we are using Kirchhoff's law, what is the EMF developed in this area? Let's say there is a magnetic field B in this area, so the flux will be, let's say phi1 through each loop. If the flux through each loop is phi1 due to the magnetic field, then the total flux is N phi1. And the total EMF developed in this loop is the rate of change of flux with a minus sign. So minus N D phi 1 by DT. So minus N, this is N1. D phi 1 by DT. We know this is equal to 0. This is our first equation. Now because this is a soft iron core, the magnetic field within this material will be many times greater than the magnetic field created by any of these currents. So we can neglect the magnetic field created by the currents in front of the magnetic field within the soft iron core itself. And because it's a soft iron core, there will be a constant magnetic field produced throughout the soft iron core because the moment you magnetize one region, the whole iron will be magnetized. That's the whole property of ferromagnetic materials. Right. So let's say phi 2 is the flux in this region. Then the equation for the second one will be N2 d phi 2 by dt is equal to E2. Right, because N2 d phi 2 by dt will be the net flux through here, the rate of change of flux which will be the EMF developed across these two points. Now the interesting thing here is this, if we have a soft iron core then there will be a constant magnetic field within the material and that magnetic field will be so large that we can assume that its value is the same here and here because it is not affected by these currents. Also the soft iron core is created such that the area of the loops in N1 and N2 both are the same. So what that will mean is phi1 is equal to phi2 because the area is perpendicular to the magnetic field, both areas are the same, both magnetic fields are the same, have the same magnitude, right? So if phi1 is equal to phi2, the equation we get is E1 minus is equal to N1 d phi by dt and I made a small mistake. Here it should be a minus sign because obviously EMF is equal to minus N d phi by dt, right? E2 is equal to minus N2 d phi by dt. Now I use phi1 is equal to phi2 and I get the most important result of transformers. E2 is equal to minus N2 by N1 E1. So the one thing we see is that, by the way, this is called the primary and this is called the secondary. We use an AC source in the primary to create another AC source in the secondary. The first thing we see is this minus sign. Both the alternating currents are out of phase. 
by a factor of 90 degree. The other thing is this N2 by N1. By changing the values of N2 and N1 by changing the number of loops, we can actually change the value of the EMF. It will still be an alternating current, just the magnitude will be decreased. If initially in E1 it was like this, then E2 could either be like this or it could be like this, depending on what the values of N1 and N2 are. If N2 is greater than N1, then the EMF magnitude here is greater than here and that is called a step up transformer. N2 greater than N1. If N2 is less than N1, then the magnitude of EMF of the secondary is less than the magnitude of EMF of the primary and that is called a step down transformer. There is one final thing left in transformers that is the efficiency. Normally there is some energy dissipated due to the form of heat whenever we give power and we receive power on the other end and the efficiency denoted by eta is simply output power by input power and when you make transformers these days efficiencies of around 99% can actually be e easily achieved. So there is a certain amount of energy lost as heat but most of the energy that we input through the primary we get back through the secondary. This completes alternating current. Thank you.